Now, as we begin to study and read through Genesis, I realize that most of us have heard the creation story many, many times. So sometimes this does us a disfavor. It means that we kind of just rush through it to get through it because we know it already. Uh, or maybe, you know, we've heard so many arguments over Genesis 1 to 3. You know, is it literal? Is it allegorical? Does it leave room for evolution? Or the days, literal 24-hour days? All of these issues that we can talk about, but sometimes they distract us from the actual point of Genesis 1 to 3, which it's a real shame because these chapters set up redemption history. They actually introduce us to God's plan of salvation. So in order to understand the mission of Christ Jesus, we first have to know the premise of that mission. To get the last Adam, we should probably also understand the first Adam. So let's jump into it. The first chapter of the Bible firmly establishes that God is distinct from the material world. He is not the world. He is not nature. Rather, he created them. He gave them purpose. And just as the Spirit of God is said to have hovered over the waters of creation in Genesis 1 verse 2, so God reigns even over the physical waters of the world. Now, water, as you, as you and I still know today, it's both devastatingly unpredictable and dangerous and painfully necessary and life-giving. So it's easy to see why water represented chaos in the ancient Mesopotamian and Near Eastern cultures that Israel was a part of. Genesis 1 establishes God as the master even over chaos. He's over all. Now, Genesis 1 also lays out the purpose of mankind, to be ruler over God's creation, right? Images of God, yet not God. We were to rule the earth in God's place. This was what he wanted. Now, when we get to Genesis 2, it lays down some clarification. There was a rule. Now, even though this rule was simple, don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it was also profound. It created a choice for mankind. Would they be content to be rulers under the authority of God? Or would they need to cast off his moral constraint? Would they need to become their own authority, their own God? Now, to be under God's authority meant safety, provision, and life. The garden was lush, it was safe, food and life were guaranteed. To cast off God's authority and eat from the tree meant the exact opposite, guaranteed death. When Eve and Adam chose to try to become like God and eat from the tree, they became aware of their nudity. They realized their vulnerability. Protection wasn't their default condition anymore. Then in fear, they hid from God. They had lost their security, their safety and comfort. What was once safety and protection had become vulnerability and fear. Next came God's description of how life would now be. To Eve, God outlined how painful childbirth would be. Remember that up until our modern advances of medicine, childbirth was a leading cause of death for women. Uh, so as a result of Eve's choice, to give birth to new life would now guarantee some death. Birth became a risky business. New life was now nerve-wracking. It was dangerous and uncertain. And added to this, the male-female relationship would now be tainted in some way. Life had become death. To Adam, God described how man's efforts to grow food would be painfully laborious, not just in the hard work, but in the inevitability that sometimes all the right work would be done and still what would come from the fields would be thorns and thistles. A failed crop for any reason meant death. Now, this is maybe what we should take from the phrase, by the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food. That farming would now bring great anxiety, nervous sweat, waiting to see if the crops would actually materialize, waiting to see if they would live or starve. And the futility of human life is explained in the phrase, from dust you came and to dust you shall return. The ground was supposed to receive seed and produce food for mankind, but now it will receive their dead bodies. The symbolism in this wasn't lost to the Apostle Paul, who speaks of our physical bodies as a type of seed that will change on the day of resurrection from the dead. And perhaps it's captured in the picture of the whole earth groaning like a woman in labor. Back to the point though, mankind didn't just lose immortality when they sinned against God. They went from creatures endowed with property and position, creatures with guaranteed harvest protection and relationship to vulnerable, dysfunctional, homeless beings. Beings who would need to struggle to create all these things anew. 
purpose and provision had turned into survival and fear, Eve and Adam became their own gods and now had the responsibilities that the true God used to handle. And it turns out it was a terrible trade-off. So how then would this situation be remedied? How would mankind's relationship with God be reestablished? The scene is set. Thank you so much for watching. We want to keep producing high quality biblical content, but we can't do it without your support. If you feel called to support us, please click the link in the description under donate. Your support really means a lot to us.